tangible visual evidence of the immediacy of climate change itself. Glaciers matter because they're the canary in the global coal mine. It's the place where you can see climate change happening. Without further ado, let me tell you what we've been seeing out there. This is a glacier called the Solheim Glacier. We're looking down on it. Now we turn on our time lapse. You can see the terminus retreating, you can see this river being formed, you can see it deflating. You go back a couple years in time, that's where it started. That's where it ended a few months ago. Now down onto the side of the glacier, looking across the terminus, this is what we see. Look at this. You'll see deflation happening here as the heat takes away the surface of the glacier and the surface drops. At the same time, a stream is undercutting it from a glacier that's melting faster up valley, washing this thing away. The vast majority of glaciers in the world are retreating. Glacier National Park, Montana will need a new name. We'll be calling it Glacier Less National Park by the middle of the century because all the glaciers will be gone. There's such a strange, bizarre fascination in seeing these things you don't normally get to see come alive. We're up at the Columbia Glacier in Alaska. This is a view of what's called the calving face. This is what one of our cameras saw over the course of a few months. The action at Columbia is in part due to local glacier dynamics and in part due to climate change. Here's another time-lapse shot of Columbia. And everybody says, well, don't they advance in the wintertime? No, it was retreating through the winter because it's an unhealthy glacier. We realized it was retreating so far, we had to turn the camera upstream to follow the retreat. Then we had to pivot it again. And then when we went back this past August, it was so far out of frame, we had to turn the camera one more time so we could still see the glacier. So that's where we started three years ago, way out on the left. That's where we were a few months ago, last time we were into Columbia. James Baylog is documenting the melting of glaciers around the world, the most visible manifestations of climate change on the planet. And he's making it possible for scientists to watch, too. James Baylog is founder and director of the Extreme Ice Survey. He's joining us now from Denver. James, thanks for being with us. My pleasure, thank you. And we'll also have more of our special report on a man who lets his pictures do the talking. As a photographer, it's exciting to see this stuff. But as a citizen of the world, you go, this is horrible. And consider who NASA is sending as a delegate to the Climate Change Summit in Copenhagen, Jim Baylog, a photographer with the group Extreme Ice Survey. Prior to 06, the glacier had retreated 10, 11 miles, and now we've added, just in the past few years, another two and a half miles. One of the things you often hear in the debate about glacier change is that there are glaciers around the world which are also getting bigger and advancing. So how can that be? How can that be a response to a global warming signal. What we've done recently on the Yukon Territory in Canada where we looked at the change in glacier area from 1958 to 2008. And what we found was of the 1,400 glaciers that were there in 1958, four got bigger. Over 300 disappeared completely. 
and almost all of the rest got smaller. Yes, there is a component of natural variability in the climate change we observe, but it's not enough to explain the full signal. So there has to be a greenhouse gas element to it. Up to the Lulisat Glacier calving face, a little helicopter is shown for scale. The Atlantic Ocean is on the left side of the frame, covered with icebergs so thick that you could walk across the ocean and never touch it. I'm on the phone with Jim on one of our regular check-ins. Like, Jim, it just, nothing's happening. Hey, Jim. Uh, it's going well. We had uh, some serious bouts of wind. But other than that, things are fairly well set up here. We've got some continuous time lapse going. It's starting, Adam, I think. Adam, it's starting. Oh, wait, Jim, Jim. Jim, this is the, the big piece of starting the cab. Let me call you back. Call him back. OK, bye. Yeah, in that V section right there. Holy shit, look at that big bird rolling. All four are running, right? Yeah. Look at that. Do you see how, look at the whole thing. face is 300, sometimes 400 feet tall. Pieces of ice were shooting up out of the ocean 600 feet and then falling. The only way that you can really try to put it into scale with human reference is if you imagine Manhattan. And all of a sudden, all of those buildings just start to rumble and quake and peel off and just fall over and fall over and roll around. This whole massive city just breaking apart in front of your eyes. We're just observers, these two little dots on the side of the mountain. And we watched and recorded the largest witness calving event ever caught on tape. So how big was this calving event that we just looked at? We'll resort to some illustrations again to give you a sense of scale. It's as if the entire lower tip of Manhattan broke off, except that the thickness, the height of it, is equivalent to buildings that are two and a half or three times higher than they are. It's a magical, miraculous, horrible, scary thing. I don't know that anybody's really seen the miracle and horror of that. It took a hundred years for it to retreat 
eight miles from 1900 to 2000. From 2000 to 2010, it retreated nine miles. So in 10 years, it retreated more than it had in the previous 100. It's real. The changes are happening. They're very visible. They're photographable. They're measurable. There is no significant scientific dispute about that. And the great irony and tragedy of our time is that a lot of the general public thinks that science is still arguing about that. Science is not arguing about that. One of the really troubling things about climate change is that almost all of the world's uh, prestigious climatologists are much more frightened about all this than the public is. People have a hard time understanding when we talk about climate change. What for me is so powerful and actually unprecedented in the work that he is doing is visualizing the change that allows us to actually see what was and what is becoming. I uh, actually saw his work last spring and that kind of changed my life in the sense that I had to quit what I was doing, which was working for Shell, and get involved in this debate in a much more profound way. The Extreme Ice Survey will go down in history as this is the, the evidence that we knew what was going on. You can't deny it. We don't have a problem of economics, technology, and, and public policy. We have a problem of perception because not enough people really get it yet. I believe we have an opportunity right now. We are nearly on the edge of a crisis, but we still have an opportunity to face the greatest challenge of our generation, in fact, of our century. Thank you. When my daughters, Simone and Emily, look at me 25 or 30 years from now and say, what were you doing? When, when, when global warming was happening and you guys knew what was coming down the road, I want to be able to say, guys, I was doing everything I knew how to do. Just a taste of things to come. I still smile. But Thank you. 